Rome, 161 BCE. A young man, barely a teenager, enters the Senate chamber. The august body has already been informed that he is an ambassador from Judea. But this is not the ragged rebel of the senator's imaginations. This man is dressed in the finery of a prince. He announces himself. My name is Jason ben Eliezer. My uncle, Judas Maccabeus, and the Jewish people have sent us to make alliance with you, that we may be registered your confederates and friends, and aid us in removing the yoke of the Greeks. The senators erupt in debate, not because of what the boy said, but because he had said it in Greek, which had just that year been banned from the chamber. At long last, the consul, Marcus Valerius Massala, takes him into the courtyard and whispers in the prohibited tongue, Dehomaste. Jerusalem, one year earlier. Judea was at peace. The Acre had fallen. The Seleucid tyrant Lysias was dead, betrayed by his own men, and the Seleucid Empire had a new king, Demetrius the Savior, who had begun peace negotiations with Judah Maccabee. His offer? Step down from the high priesthood and Judea will be an autonomous vassal of my empire. Before going forward, we have to talk about priestly succession. While it's true that the Jewish high priesthood was passed from father to son, there was no rule about which son would inherit the title. In the century since the building of the Second Temple, multiple families had branched off the priestly line, all equally qualified under Jewish law to serve as the supreme leader of the Jewish tradition. The Maccabees were part of the Hasmonean branch, but before the war, the high priesthood had been held by a pro-Hellenist branch called the Oniads. These were Seleucid collaborators, the very priests who had done nothing to stop the looting of the temple five years earlier. But Judah Maccabee had learned from his father's mistakes. This was no time to continue fighting. So he turned the temple over to the Oniad priest Alcimus. Besides, Judah reasoned, the court at Antioch was so unstable at this point that it would only be a matter of time before Demetrius's position was challenged, presenting an opportunity to seize back the temple. That opportunity presented itself just a few months later, when Media revolted against Demetrius. Immediately, the Maccabees deposed Alcimus, sending him fleeing back to Antioch. The same day, Judah sent his cousin Eupolemus and his nephew Jason to the port of Jaffa to find a ship that would take them to Rome. Demetrius' men would not be long, and Judea could not win independence alone. Six weeks later, a series of brass tablets arrived in Jerusalem. Good success be to the Romans and to the Jews, by sea and by land forever, and far be the sword and enemy from them. But if war ever comes upon the Romans or their confederates in all their dominions, the Jews shall help them with all their heart. In like manner, if war comes upon the Jews, the Romans shall help them with all their heart. By these articles, the Romans have established a covenant with the Jews. We have written to Demetrius, asking why he has oppressed our friends and allies. Therefore, if the Seleucids come to us to complain of you again, whether by sea or by land, we will make war, by sea and by land." Judah was shocked. He had expected weeks of negotiations. In fact, the Romans had been expecting a Jewish delegation for the better part of a year, and didn't understand what had taken them so long. See, for the previous two years, the Roman Senate had been under the false impression that they and the Maccabees had been working together. Otherwise, they wouldn't have let Demetrius escape from prison. And yes, the Senate let him escape. Remember, Demetrius was a sworn enemy of Rome, and actually voting to free him would have been political suicide. So instead, they made it look like an escape, in the correct expectation that it would destabilize the court at Antioch and help the Jewish cause. The Romans were also right to worry that a treaty of alliance had come too late. For no sooner had the Romans received the Jewish confirmation of the treaty than news arrived. Judah Maccabee was dead. While waiting for Roman support, he and his brother John Gaddy had been ambushed by a 22,000-strong Seleucid army at Alassa. Jerusalem had fallen, and Alcimus had returned to the high priesthood. But there's still a little time left for one last Hanukkah miracle. For almost as soon as the traitorous Alcimus had returned to the temple, he died of a stroke. Just as when the war had begun on the road to Alexandria, the fate of the Seleucid Empire, in all its might and manpower, had rested on the fortune of a single man and fortune had failed them. Seven years of bloodshed had yielded nothing. By the end of 160, Jonathan Aphis, the youngest of the Maccabees, had taken Judah's mantle as high priest, and Demetrius the Savior gave in. 
recognizing Jonathan as the rightful ruler of Judea. The Maccabean Revolt was over, and while Judea was not fully independent, it was, once more, a nation. Happy Hanukkah. Special thanks to my patrons, including Gaonit-level patron Vicky Nelson. If you like this video, you can also donate via Patreon link below. You can also check out my book, An Armada of Cats, Travels in Israel. Otherwise, you can always like, share, and subscribe. I'll see you next time.